through one of the most unique truck schedules that would challenge the ones that raced in Tucson, Bakersfield, and the Milwaukee Mile, it's time to go playoff trucking. Ten drivers have fought tooth and nail to separate themselves from the rest to compete over the next seven weeks, with many, many long breaks in between for truckers' glory. Thus, it's time to look at the contenders and preview the 2021 NASCAR Truck Series playoffs. It's time to get trucking. If there is one story to be told of this Truck Series season, it's the straight-up dominance of the silver nameplate. Whether it's wins, laps led, or even in the regular season point standings, those damn cheating Yoders have made some of these races this season absolute barn bummers. This all starting at the very top with Kyle Busch Motorsports. And no, it isn't just Kyle Busch getting in his own equipment to further embarrass the living hell out of his young prospects and make them look like beginner go-kart drivers. It is far from that. Because really, for the first time since 2017, we have a driver that stepped up to the plate in KBM trucks and has given the boss man a cup level challenge. And that is none other than John Hunter Nemechek. I think it's safe to say this guy gets done celebrating well before a lot of his competition even crosses the start finish line. At least, that's what it's felt like with his five wins, in particular Las Vegas and Richmond, races in which he was lights out dominant. And to the dismay of many NASCAR fans, he's made this season widely predictable with minimal challenges from his opposition. Therefore, in theory, this year's Truck Series champion should already be penciled in. I think considering just what John Hunter Nemechek has done, both in the past offseason and in this regular season, this is a must-win championship. This is Nemechek's title to lose, and if he still has big-time cup aspirations one day, he's got to close this one out. He absolutely has to. And fortunately for him, in August, the odds are heavily, heavily in his favor to do so. But perhaps the Hitori Racing Team, going for their second championship with young Sir Austin Hill, might just have a fighting chance. A team and driver that had a terrible start to the year in Daytona has slowly found its regular season championship form from last season. Austin Hill has only finished outside the top 10 once since the throwback race in Darlington. Yes, even at the short track race in Richmond, he got a top 10. But in addition to that, Hill and Scott Zipidelli are also starting to add speed to that consistent foundation by leading 46 laps in the past two races en route to the first two wins on the year. But that is not all for positivity, not at all. Even better news is the fact that Las Vegas, the Sin City playground for Austin Hill, thanks to the Texas Fall Race relocating to Coda, is officially a race to punch a ticket into the championship race at Phoenix. And I'll bet that race is circled in freaking glitter on the Hitori calendar. Because if Austin Hill is to win that race, that's one less of those devilish short tracks on his way to championship glory. You want to know one of the greatest tragedies of the 2021 Truck Series season? It was the Las Vegas race where Ben Rhodes and Rich Lucius officially lost their bid to complete the first perfect season in NASCAR history. And if we're going off football records, this 99 team just had one of the single greatest collapses in NASCAR history, finishing the regular season at 2-13. and 13. Almost surely not to be taken seriously in these playoffs. Uh, playoffs? Don't talk about playoffs? You kidding me? So that leaves the major question, and that is if they can win. In fact, win multiple races and get back to the performance in March. First, a bit of bad news. Ben Rhodes won all of his races in Daytona, and there are no more truck races to be run in the Sunshine State. However, the good news is he has some good tracks coming up in these playoffs. Darlington last year, he was able to crash the throwback party and return to victory lane for the first time since 2018. Las Vegas was also the site of his very first career victory all the way back in 2017 when he drove the 27 truck, just one of his many, many numbers at Thor Sport. And considering how well he did in Daytona, Talladega should be circled on Ben Rhodes' calendar as a track that he can win and officially punch his ticket into the championship race. And honestly, I'd say these playoffs are very, very important for Ben Rhodes. He has the experience and he's starting to become one of the better drivers at Thor Sport. And making a deep playoff run this year might just elevate the Kentucky kid to championship level status. Meanwhile, the Blue Oval has just one torchbearer in this playoff fight, but it's a mighty good one in Todd Gilliland. He and Front Row Motorsports, they were expected to lead without Thor Sport, and I'd say they've done a mighty solid job. The second most stage wins, fourth most laps led, and this 38 team in Todd Gilliland won the first ever NASCAR sanctioned race at Coda. 
But what's most impressive about this sophomore season has to be the consistency. Just one finish outside the top 10 dating back to the Bristol Dirt Race. It's incredible to see how much Todd Gilliland has grown and matured as a driver after flopping hard at KBM. Thus, when you put all the pieces together, this 38 team is primed to make a deep run at this championship well into the desert. Maybe even break some hearts in the Toyota camp and just maybe Todd Gilliland can keep former boss Kyle Busch up at night just wondering why on earth he let him go. Seeded fifth is the highly talented wheelman from California and your defending truck series champion, Sheldon Creed. It's a bit surprising to not only see Creed be a mid-pack seed in these playoffs, but to also have just one lone win on the year at Darlington back in May. In fact, this was the lone win for Chevrolet in the regular season. Sheldon Creed and GMS have been some of the biggest disappointments of the truck series season. This team right here just doesn't have the speed and also the consistency has reverted back to the likes of 2019. Now the good news here is the playoffs are stacked full of tracks in Sheldon Creed's wheelhouse. Gateway, he's the defending winner and will look to go back to back in the loo. Darlington, thanks to a late season sub in, is now in the playoffs and Creed will be eyeing to sweep the Lady in Black clean for 2021. And then of course there's Phoenix. And we all know just what happened in Phoenix last year. But even then, there's some great, great doubt as to whether this two team can get back to that competitive pedigree that made them so successful last season. The same thing can be said for co-breakout star of 2020, Zane Smith. As much as I'm a fan of this guy, I have to be a truther here. It's been a very, very disappointing sophomore season. Despite winning three stages, he has just one top five finish on the year. That's the lowest of the 10 playoff drivers. I also think another issue with Zane Smith this season is, remember those incredible flashes of talent he showed us last season? A lot of that aggressiveness and boldness has disappeared from what I've been able to watch this year. So to sum it all up, Smith's been a top 10 driver, but you rarely see him driving the wheels off his truck, chasing down those checkered flags like many other young drivers. But then again, I'll cut him some slack. GMS Racing has taken a massive step back, and not just one, but both of the tracks St. Smith managed to win at last season were axed from this year's 22 race schedule. There's still hope that maybe Zane Smith can craft in his way to his first title, as the round of eight this year as Talladega, so just maybe if he avoids the big wreck and some of the other contenders get taken out, he has a good shot to point his way in. But it's going to take a lot more than sixth place finishes in order to win the championship this year, so the team's definitely going to have to step it up. Speaking of the three-time champ, Matt Crafton is back, folks. And no, he hasn't won any races this year. In fact, he hasn't been even close, leading just 16 laps on the year. So far in 2021, it's been a casual 7th to 10th place season for Matt Crafton, and that's exactly his ideal scenario. Get a bunch of top 10s, make the playoffs, and then start performing once it matters. Those are the seasons in which Matt Crafton does best in capturing championship glory. Also to his advantage, again, is the experience within this ADA team. Matt Crafton has more playoff starts than any other driver and has more championships than the other nine drivers combined. It's hard to ignore what this guy has done in the fall and it is why you can never, under any circumstances, count out the 88. I think we've also got to avoid undervaluing the playoff driver from Nice Motorsports this year. No, it isn't Brent Moffat. No, it isn't Ryan Truex. Honestly, who even are these guys? Because Carson Hosevar this year has outperformed his two veteran teammates in a big way to get to this position. I honestly hope he makes it far in a November, and I think with a guy like Phil Gould calling the shots coupled in with a consistency, he's got a real fighting chance to do so. But if he doesn't, there's no shame to be put onto Carson Hosevar and really this entire 42 team for besting out the other two Nice trucks and even three trucks at GMS. That's almost a polar opposite feeling than they want to have for this 18 team. Even though Chandler Smith actually made the playoffs, something fellow KBM youngsters before him couldn't do, overall there's still a sense of great disappointment in the 19 year old's performance this season. His average finish in differential is actually much worse than Christian Eckes last year. Plus, considering all the dominance, all the winning Toyota and KBM have done this year, particularly from the other full-time driver in that four truck, is this really something we should be celebrating? It should be an expectation of Chandler Smith to make the playoffs. That part is done. 
Now, it is expected of Chandler Smith to go out and win a race. And I'm sure you guys are saying, NRF, you're being tough on these young kids. This is only their first year. Well, Cup drivers William Byron and Christopher Bell easily did this. They easily went out and won races in Smith's exact position. At this point, if Chandler Smith, if he really wants to prove that he's the real deal, he needs to capture that checkered flag. And there's no better time than in NASCAR's postseason. Go out and get it done. The Helmar Racing Team and Stuart Friesen are officially back in the 10 drive battle for a trucker's glory. But oddly enough, much like Chandler Smith, Friesen is actually having a worse year statistics-wise compared to 2020. A very slim amount of top 10s and surprisingly a worse average finish of 17.4. In fact, there is even a change at head crew chief with John Leonard taking over for longtime crew chief Trip Bruce. And if I'm going to be real, it's an accomplishment in itself that Stuart Friesen made the playoffs even as a Toyota team, because this 52 team just doesn't seem primed to compete alongside the likes of GMS and KBM for this championship. I think the very least Friesen and this Helmar team could do in this playoffs is make it known that this 52 truck put up a better fight than had Ankrum or Sauter in this position. And that's honestly all I expect from a truck with one of the greatest paint schemes in trucks. I mean, that neon blue, that neon orange, still fantastic in 2021. The final thing of note to point out here is the official list of tracks here for the playoff truckers. The round of 10 will see the wonderful sports city of St. Louis host its first ever playoff race. And I'm telling you, Gateway is going to be absolutely electric this weekend. That race will take place along the sub and for Canadian tire in Darlington and of course the pavement version of Bristol. The round of 8 then features Las Vegas, Talladega and Martinsville as these three tracks have decided champions for years and this time they will be the last resorts to duke it out in the desert. So now we've gotten to perhaps the best part of the video as now it's time for my crack at accurately predicting or trying to predict which drivers will be racing in that spectacle in Phoenix. Honestly, the round of 10 in my opinion is going to come down to the bottom three guys who fought each other hard in the standings for seeding. Only this time just one will advance, which I predict will be Carson Hosevar. Toyota teammates Chandler Smith and Stuart Friesen will have a month long stay. Longer than Xfinity and Cup, but you want to stay in this playoff hotel as long as possible, and I know going out in the first round is very, very tough. As for the round of 8, this is where the true battle begins. Eight of the very best in a seemingly three month battle to get to Phoenix. And from those races, I have Carson Hosevar, Matt Crafton, Ben Rose, and Sheldon Creed. Yes, that's absolutely right. The defending champ won't get a chance to defend his title. Honestly, in the end, I'm just not digging this two team this year, and I just think this isn't their year. So, with that, that officially means your championship four are as follows Austin Hill, thanks to a win at Las Vegas, Todd Gillen by win at Talladega. John Hunter Nemechek punching his ticket at the paperclip, and for the second year in a row, Zane Smith points his way into the championship race. It's going to be one hell of a fight if these four make it to Phoenix, but if not, I have no doubts that this Truck Series playoffs is going to be exciting, and it's going to be much watch TV on FS1 beginning this weekend in St. Louis. So anyways, this is NRF signing out, and just remember, life's a beach, and then you drive.